Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, I'm just going to take a quick look at the 24 volt power functionality of these process calibrators that I have. Uh, and what I intend to do is load it up with my electronic load here and just see what the output capability of these units are. Obviously, the Finerses both have 24 volts output capability, as does the MR9270S. Um, the LB02 here, whilst it does have that, that is made specifically for loop powered sensors, so I'm not going to do that during this test. I'm just going to test these three units out with a separate 24 volts power supply built into them. So, both Finerse units, they have a 3.7 volt, 3000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery inside them. Type is 755060. The placement batteries are widely available on AliExpress. Price varies tremendously from 10 to 20 pounds, something like that. Um, so you do need to have a good shop around if you do need a replacement for these. And to get into these, you actually have to open up the unit itself. Uh, the two clamshells come apart and the battery is double-sided sticky taped onto the inside of the back of the case. And then there's a little connector onto the main PCB. For our MR9270S, you actually have a battery compartment in this uh, so it just slides out of its rubber boot and then you can get into the back of the uh, battery just inside there when you open that up. It's a slightly different battery, it's slightly smaller. It's a 2500 milliamp hour battery, again 3.7 volts and it is a Type 104050. Uh, again they're widely available on AliExpress, uh, 5 to 10 pounds in price. Uh, the other slight difference with this is when you get this open you'll see this does actually have standard AA battery housing in there so you can actually put three AA batteries in there and power it from that. Okay so just for a change I'll put the results plot up. You can see these are the three curves that I've produced from these units. Now, the two Finerse units they pretty much follow the same pattern as you would expect but you do see the output of the SG-003A slightly lower than the SG-004A there. I believe that that difference is more likely to be due to the condition of the batteries within the units rather than the electronics itself. And then we look at the curve on the MR9270S. Uh, very similar initially, uh, but it does appear to drop off quite a bit earlier. And somewhere around about 300 ohm load is where this unit seems to drop out. Whereas the two Finerse units seem to be able to handle a slightly larger load. Okay, so I'll just go briefly through the testing that I did. I zoomed into the actual screens. I've got my electronic load here. It's set to constant resistance. Currently, it's set to 1000 ohms and it's actually off. So we're just reading open circuit battery voltage. The SG-004A that will demonstrate that is set up to supply independent 24 volts, which you can see 24 volts there. And I'm plugged into the common and what would be the input negative terminal or the positive output terminal for the 24 volt supply. So we can just turn him on straight away and you can see we get an initial voltage drop a little bit uh, but we are supplying 0 0.023 amps going in there and then all I did was just page down through the actual resistance values so I'll just go straight down to the 400 ohm and you can see my 24.219 so it drops a little bit and the current's gone up to 0 0.059. And then let's go down a little bit more, 300 ohms. So this is where it starts to drop off quite a bit more on both the Finerse units. 200 ohms, you see we drop 22. Now this uh, SG-004I will take 100 ohms. It does drop 18.9 and it starts to recover a little bit. Both the other two units do drop off completely when you go to 100 ohms. So that's how I've been testing them, just setting the load resistance and then reading off the voltage and the current on the electronic load here. And I'll just take this up to uh, 1000 again and turn them off and we'll stick the MR9270S in. And again, you see we've got 25.572 volts, so it does start out slightly better than both the Finerse units, uh, but it does seem to drop off quicker. And again, we'll go... Uh, we don't have to turn it on. 25 again, it's holding above 25 volts now. And then we start to go down through and 
Now your 400 ohm resistances, so 400 ohm to be honest, I think these units can all handle that. It's not too much of an issue to them. That's probably the most load that I would want to put on to one of these units given the results we've got. 300 we start to drop off, 200 again we're dropping off, and then 100 and you can see at 100 ohms this one drops off completely. Um, I don't know whether there's some form of current limiting in there or not, but it doesn't like it at all. Um, so we go back up to 200 and you see we start to uh, 300 we recover pretty much so still a little bit low but it does seem to be able to supply 300 and then we got to 400 seems to be much happier so I said that's probably the most load I'd put onto one of these units when I initially tested these units the battery charge level was uh, around about 50 and 60 percent somewhere around about there so in order to see if the state of the charge of the batteries affected the output voltage, I charged both these units back up to 100% charge and then just ran a open circuit and a full load test on it. And that's what this plot shows. It does show the data for the SG-003A there. So again, you can see that the MR9270S doesn't quite have the same performance as these two Finercy units with regard to the power capability of the 24 volts but in all honesty these units are really designed for powering transmitters and nothing else uh, so you would only normally expect sort of 24 25 milliamp maximum output capability of these that's all it really needs to do the job and all three of these units can quite easily handle that as the tests have shown so that's it for this video uh, thanks for watching hope you found it useful and i'll see you again in the next one